okay, we've been looking at this idea of, of, of differentials and what what is a differential, what are they used for, and two videos ago we, we kind of saw what a differential was and we concluded that all a differential is is a really small number. We had the differential of x, we had the differential of y, and we saw that uh, the differential of x was actually equal to delta x. Delta x was this distance right here, dx was this distance right here. But when it came time to look at the differential of y, we saw that it merely approximated the actual change in function value, the actual change in y. Here's what I mean. Uh, the actual um, change from f of c to f of c plus delta x is my delta y. Let me just uh, draw that real quickly for you. This right here is delta y, which is this guy. Well, we saw that dy is a good approximator of delta y if delta x is small enough. Okay, from there, we looked at an example and we saw that differentials are really good evaluator, really good approximators of function values. If you have a function and you want to approximate that function at a given value, you can use differentials, which is what we did right here, to approximate that value. And in this case, we said that the square root of 100.4 was approximately 10 and 1 50th, and that, that was pretty accurate. Well, in this video, we're going to look at a little bit more concrete example, and we can have a little bit of fun with it here. And let's pretend for a moment that, that, we, are, that we are the proud owners of a very lucrative company. This lucrative company makes, they happen to make red squares. Okay, or maybe they're, I guess they don't have to be red. Uh, but they make red 12 by 12 squares. At least that's what they're supposed to be. And you sell these squares all over the world to people who want to buy squares and use them for whatever they use squares for. Um, well, the problem is is these squares, if they're going to be of a, of a certain quality, they need to, if somebody's going to buy a 12 by 12 square, they want to make sure that it's, it's really a 12 by 12 square. The problem here is the equipment you use has some error to it. In other words, you're, you can't cut exactly 12 inches every single time. There's going to be some error built into your equipment. And it turns out that for the most part, it might as well be 12 inches. But there could be some variance in there. This, the length of this, the edge of this square, might be 1 64th of an inch off in either direction. So it could be a little bit longer than 12 inches or a little bit shorter than 12 inches. And you might think, well, no big deal. Nobody is going to pick up with the naked eye 1 64th of an inch. And that might be true. Um, the question I have is, how does that, how does that error in cutting the side, how does that error affect another measurement? Okay, the measurement in this case that I'm interested in is the area. Okay, I know that the area is supposed to be 144 square inches, but I want you to think about something. If, if I'm off this direction, and at the same time I'm off this direction, how does that affect the overall area? I'm off in both directions, and since area is, is uh, one side multiplied by the other side, you could see that I could be possibly multiplying this area uh, through to my to my uh, to my entire area. Okay, well, how do I do this? Um, well, I first need I first need an equation that describes the area of a square, and that's simple enough. Okay, the next thing I need to do is I need to find the differentials associated with this equation. Okay, what do I mean by find the differentials? Well. An easy way to find the differentials of this equation, um, most of you probably in, in like a chap in chapter two of, of a calc book probably would do this problem this way. You would say, well, I'm going to differentiate with respect to x. And you take the derivative, you call it good, and you move on. Well, when we move to this idea of differentials, it kind of looks like that what we've done is it, is it kind of looks like we've multiplied both sides by dx and when we do this okay these guys look like they kind of go away and, and the, the final result the final result is this what we call it a differential equation and we have dA is equal to 2x times dx so it looks like we just multiplied both sides by dx that's how you can remember it 
Um, there, there are some people who, who may take issue with this notion of, of multiplying both sides by dx, but uh, the notation lends itself very well to, to sort of algebraically manipulating this to, to get our desired differential. Okay, even though that, that maybe we're not really supposed to do that. Okay, so uh, what do we do now? We have this differential of a in terms of x and dx. So let's just go ahead now and, and plug in some numbers and see if we can evaluate the, the differential of a. Well, what is, what is the value of x and what is the value of dx? Well, the value of x is supposed to be 12. And I know that the, the value of dx is plus or minus 1 64th. OK, if I multiply all this together, I get the differential of a, or the change in the area, <clears throat> is equal to, well, this is just 24. And 24 times 1 64th, I believe, I believe that reduces to 3 8 OK, now what are the units on this? Think about the units. Well, we're dealing with area, so it better be square units. OK, now this is, this is the raw error. OK, that's the error. That's how much the, the area can actually be off. In other words, um, we know that the area of the square is supposed to be 144, um, but it could be as high as 144 plus this value or as low as 144 minus this value. Okay, so, so that's the, the given, that's the error uh, that has been propagated through to the area. Okay, well, what if, um, how could we make more meaning out of that? Is that, we have to decide, is that, a, uh, is that an acceptable um, amount of change in the area? We, we, we might decide that, that being off 1 64th of an inch, that's pretty good. But does that propagate too much of of an error in our in our area well we need to decide if that's good or bad so the way we do that actually is pretty easy um, just divide a couple of numbers and it turns out you take your your propagated area which is DA and you divide it by what it's supposed to be okay so you would take 3 8 and divide it by the actual area. And I don't know what this is off the top of my head, so I'll get my trusty calculator. I th actually think I just did this. We'll make sure. Let's see. 3 divided by 8 equals 0.375. Now let's divide that by 144. And that, that indeed does equal 0 0.0026. So let's write this down. 0.0026. 0, 2, 6. And we call this the relative error. Okay, it will make more sense to you if you convert it to a percentage, which would be 0.26%. Okay, so relative error, percent error. Sometimes uh, we can decide if, if the error is good or bad enough uh, based on the relative error. In other words, maybe from the beginning, uh, before you even started manufacturing squares, a, a group of, of people came together at the company and decided that uh, the, the final square could be within plus or minus 1% of the expected area. In, in, in other words, the area is supposed to be 144, but they determined from the beginning that their quality control would allow them to go 1% above this, this figure and 1% below it. The equipment they had was only good to plus or minus 1 64th of an inch. And they want to know, is that going to get us to within our plus or minus 1% uh, tolerance in the area? And sure enough, uh, it does. So they don't have to buy any new equipment, uh, any more accurate equipment, uh, saving the company a lot of money. OK, so there you have it. Differentials helping you find the propagated error. Hope that made sense. We'll see you around.